Welcome to this video where we are looking at Spring Boot and how it makes use of Maven. So we are kind of looking at the relationship between Spring Boot and Maven and how you can do different things with Maven for Spring Boot based projects. So the first thing we'll look at is the setup. So we'll actually go to the Spring Initializer, set up a simple Maven project with Spring Boot. We'll use Spring Boot Starter Web as the example. We'll look at a few Maven dependencies for some of the startup projects which are created by Spring Boot. Next, we would look at some of the Maven plugins which are created by Spring Boot, I mean, which are actually used by Spring Boot, which are configured by Spring Boot, I should say. And last, we would look at some of the uh, like way Maven parent pomps feature is used out by Spring Boot. So Spring Boot uses a parent pom like Spring Boot startup parent. So we'll see how that whole thing works. So let's start with the setup. So I'll go to the website. You can go into the uh, website tar.spring.io. That's the Spring Initializer. So that's where the initialization of any Spring Boot project can be done online. We want to use Maven, so I'll choose Maven project. And let's use uh, one of the earlier versions of Spring Boot, or it's fine. Actually, 1.5.1 would be a good thing as well. And what you can do is you can give a group ID of com dot in 28 minutes dot spring boot that's basically the one which we would use for everything and i'll call this student services or something of that kind it doesn't really matter actually so you can actually uh, search the dependencies here and here so i'm adding in web let's add in actuator let's add in dev tools as well and you can click generate project what would happen when you click generate project is there would be a dip the zip sorry a dip a zip that's downloaded to your local Vex workspace. So you can take this zip, unzip it to a specific folder. So that's it. So click generate project, it would download a zip for you. Take that, unzip to a folder and then launch up your favorite ID. My favorite ID is Eclipse. So we'll look at how to import the project which is generated into Eclipse. So I'm going to Eclipse. I'll do a file import. We want to, we created a Maven project. So I'll choose existing Maven projects and you can put in the directory where you extracted the zip to. So whatever zip we created from Spring Initializer, you can unzip it to a folder and paste that folder name in here. I have put it to a specific folder. So I put the root directory of that folder in here. You can also browse to it if you'd want to. So you can click browse and browse to, this, to that specific folder where you put the extracted content to. So this is what would happen. It pick up, picks up the project. So, and now you can say finish. So what you see is it's importing. So you can see that Maven is importing the projects. You need to wait for the whole import to complete. If this is the first time you're using Spring Boot, it would take a while because it downloads a lot of jars from the whole thing. Once you have the whole thing set up, then you would have a project structure like this. So you'd have a student services application because that's the name we gave, application.properties. You would have simple test file in here as well as a pom.xml. What we are really interested in this specific video is the pom.xml. Before that, let's look at Maven dependencies. So, aha, uh -huh. so you'd see that there are a lot of Maven dependencies already coming in. I have not added any of these. How am I getting it? This is through Maven. I mean, this is the magic of Maven, right? So Maven brings in all the dependencies that I would need based on the dependencies that are configured in here. So in the pom.xml, let's start with looking at what are the dependencies that are configured. What are the dependencies that are configured? The dependencies that are configured in here are whatever we chose. So Spring Boot Starter Web on Initializer, we chose Web. So we got Spring Boot Starter Web and we get Spring Boot Dev Tools because we chose Dev Tools. We chose Actuator, so we get that too. So Spring Boot Starter Web is basically the project which you would use to develop any web application with Spring Boot. Spring Boot Actuator is a way you can monitor applications in productions. Spring Boot Dev Tools helps it you in easily developing applications. If you're really interested in the details of what they do and stuff, I would recommend you to look out for the courses that we have on our website, springbootshutorial.com. But in this specific video, we are focusing on Maven. So let's go on and look at the specific dependencies that Spring Boot Starter Web brings in. One of the important things about the Spring Boot Starters are they're nothing but uh, simple projects as well. So if I go and click the open pom.xml for this, you'd see that Spring Boot Starter Web also has a POM where it specifies all its dependencies. Basically, it needs Spring Boot Starter, Tomcat. It has a dependency on validator, data bind. It uses Spring Web and Spring Web MVC. Spring MV Web MVC. Does that make sense to you? It's nothing but the Spring MVC framework. Uh, the 
framework which is popularly known as Spring MVC, this is it, Spring Web MVC. So what Spring Boot Startup Web is doing is, is including dependencies for all this stuff in its pom.xml. So thereby we would get all the dependencies which are which we see in here. So when I go to the Maven dependencies tab, a lot of these dependencies are coming in because we are using Spring Boot Starter Web. You are getting the Spring Boot Starter stuff, you are getting the logging stuff, you get the uh, embedded Tomcat, Hibernate validator, a lot of Spring, relate, Spring, Spring Boot related stuff. All those are coming in just because of one dependency, which is this Spring Boot Starter Web. So now we have completed the part one, which is to create a small project with uh, Spring Boot. And second thing we looked look at was all the de Maven dependencies for Spring Boot Starter Web. You can actually uh, create more projects if you'd want. So you can just go to Spring Initializer and let's say you want to add a JPA project. So add JPA to this, click generate project, import that project, and you can look at the startup forms for JPA as well. If you look at this, actually it supports a quite a wide variety of dependencies that are present in here. So it supports a lot of stuff and it supports a lot of starter projects as well. So if you are interested to play around with Spring Boot um, Maven projects further, what you can do is you can go to Spring Analyzer, create more projects, add whatever dependencies you would want and look at all the dependencies that come into your domain. The next thing we want to look at is Maven plugins, right? So if you look at the POM that is there at the root of the project, if you open that up, you'd see that uh, we use something called Spring Boot Maven plugin. So this Spring Boot Maven plugin is the one which allows us to run applications very easily. It allows us to build jar files. It allows us to build var files with Spring Boot. So this, not only this, uh, one of the important thing that Spring Boot brings in is something called Spring Boot parent pawns. So if you go to this any Spring Boot project, Spring Boot based project which is created with Spring Initializer, it would have a Spring Boot startup parent as the parent. So the parent is this. So this is sim similar to inheritance. So just like a class can inherit from another class, a POM can inherit from another POM. So here I'm specifying the parent of this POM, which is Spring Boot Startup Parent. And Spring Boot Startup Parent provides a lot of facilities. If I go to the website www.springboottutorial.com, we have a lot of articles on there. And if you can look for an article by Startup Parent, introduction to Spring Boot Startup Parent, we can look at all the stuff that is related to Spring Boot Startup Parent. So if you are new to Spring, uh, Spring MVC or Spring Boot, you can have one hour videos in here as well. So that's cool. Um, yeah, Spring Boot Startup Parent is this. That's basically what we included in our dependency. So what does Spring Boot uh, Parent Pom bring us? So let's see that. So one of the important things in Spring Boot Startup Parent is a Java version. By default, the Java version for our specific one is 1.6. But you can, we would override that with 1.8. Where do we do that? You can open up the pom.xml and where do we have that? So this is in here. So we are all, so by default, when we created the project with Spring Initializer, we get this. So Java version is overridden and we are getting 1.8. So the default is 1.6, but we want to use 1.8. So we do that. There are a lot of other stuff which is present in the parent form, which you can override if you would want. The other things which are present in Spring Boot Startup Parent is these stuff so a lot of plugins so if you know like the maven build life cycle there are a lot of plugins that are used during the life cycle so you run unit tests you run integration tests you create a jar so how do how are all those coming in the, those are all uh, the default maven plugins so what the spring boot parent pom contains are the configuration for that as well so you have a goal i mean you have the default configuration for Ma maven self safe a fail safe plugin. You have the default configuration for Maven Java plugin. You have the default configuration for Maven Surefire plugin. So all that stuff is also in your parent POM. Uh, one of the important things is if you look at the startup parent, control click, opening up the parent, and you'd see that Maven parent also has a parent. Spring Boot startup parent has a parent. So that's Spring Boot dependencies. So the Spring Boot dependencies, if you look at it, it has a lot of dependency management stuff in there. So you'd see that there are a lot of properties in here specifying which version of what to use. So what Spring Boot dependencies does is something called dependency management. So one of the things that is important is to make sure that I'm using compatible versions of jars. So if I'm using a specific version of Spring, then I would want to use a specific version of Jackson Data Bind also because they should work well together. If I'm using a specific version of Spring, 
I have to use a specific version of other jars which are compatible. So in an ideal scenario, if I'm using a version of Spring, then I would want to use the latest version of the framework, latest version of the other frameworks which is compatible with it. So typically what we used to do before is we used to play around and figure out what would be the uh, late, uh, like best framework combination to use, framework version combination to use as well. But now with Spring Boot startup, dependent i mean spring boot dependency is taking care of it you don't need to worry about it so as soon as i upgrade to a latest version of spring boot dependencies i mean a uh, spring i mean as soon as i uh, upgrade to the latest version of spring boot i would get the latest versions of all the compatible jars but one another option it provides is in my project i can override whatever is in here so let's say i don't want to use hibernate validator version 5.2.4 5 .5 i want to use 5.2.5 .5. i can just go to my project put a property in with the same name. So I can go to my project. Okay, buddy, I don't want to use this specific version of Hibernate Validator. I want to use the next version of it. So now if you save it, you'd see that the project gets refreshed and you'd be using the latest version of Hibernate Validator or the specified version of Hibernate Validator. Okay, that's a quick overview of all the things which are related to Spring Boot Maven, uh, related to Maven. So there are other facilities that are provided by Spring Boot with respect to Maven as well. So you can build wars, jars and things like that as well. What we looked at in this specific video is how Spring Boot and Maven work together. So we looked, we set up a small simple Maven project. We looked at the dependencies. We looked at the various plugins. We looked at the Maven parent forms that are used by Spring Boot. At in 28 minutes, our focus is on making you an expert at Spring Boot. We have created a complete website on Spring Boot at www.springbootshutorial.com. The link in the description of video would take you to a page where you find details of all the courses, videos, and the articles we have created on Spring Boot. If you love our videos, you'd love our courses too. Our courses have great reviews on Udemy. You can see some of the reviews in here. And there are also articles on basics of Spring Boot, auto configuration, startup projects, startup parent, less services, web application, all the code examples. We have Maven projects which are present, which you can directly import into Eclipse and start running them and other references as well. This page would be a great start for you to become an expert on Spring Boot. You might also want to visit our website www.in28minutes.com all other courses other than Spring Boot as well. Thank you for all the support you are providing us. We would not have grown to 52,000 on Udemy. We would not have such great reviews on courses on Udemy without your support. We would not have been able to grow to 28,000 subscribers and more than 3 million views without your support. We want you to learn and make best use of all the courses that we have. Good luck and I will see you in the next video or the course. Until next time, here's Ranga from In28 Minutes signing off.